time, and uh, we're going to move to member statement. Member statement. The member for University Rosedale. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Toronto needs a fast, reliable, safe, and affordable TTC, where riders can get to their TTC stop and quickly board that bus or streetcar or train. It transports them to where they want to go at an affordable fare. Getting a seat would be a nice thing on occasion, and it needs to be safe as well, because no one wants to go from A to B and risk being assaulted just because they're trying to get to work or go to the doctor or go to school. I wish the TTC was that fast, safe and affordable transit system, but it is not. Yesterday, on April 3, transit riders got a fare hike. A week ago, the TTC started rolling out big service cuts. In my riding, we saw service cuts on Queen Street, on the Dufferin Line, as well as Line 2, the subway line. And I fear uh, that next month there will be more service cuts to come, which is deeply concerning. And that is because the federal government and the provincial government have not stepped in to fund transit at the levels that it should be funded. And when we fail to fund transit, we create this death spiral where when we cut service, riders leave, they take their fare revenue with them, and then there's more service cuts as a result. We've seen this before in the TTC. We do not want to go down there again. I am calling on this government to properly fund transit systems, including the TTC, so everyone in Toronto can get from A to B safely at an affordable price. Thank you. Time. Next member statement, the member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. Well, thank you, Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise in the House today to share some great news once again from London, Ontario. Yesterday, NASA and the Canadian Space Agency announced the team of four astronauts who have been selected to orbit the moon on NASA's Artemis II mission. One of these individuals is astronaut Jeremy Hansen, who hails from London, Ontario. Oh, nice. Jeremy and his team will be the first astronauts to journey the moon since the end of the Apollo 17 mission in December 1972. A colonel and CF-18 pilot in the Canadian Armed Forces, Jeremy Hansen is a highly accomplished Canadian. At the age of 47, Jeremy will become the first non-American to travel beyond low Earth orbit. They will be traveling 1,000 times further than the International Space Station and will set the stage for deep space exploration. Speaker, I wish Jeremy and his colleagues great success on the Artemis II mission, which will launch in November 2024. Thank you. Next member's statement, the me member for Muskegawa, James Bay. Thank you, Speaker. Natural gas is at its all-time high, and people in Northern Ontario are struggling. Residents are seeing over 50% increase in their bills. Small businesses and non-profit organizations are at risk or shutting their doors. After speaking to Enridge and Ontario Energy Board, their hands are tied. The province cannot prosper and grow if everyone starts to close their doors and move away. Right. The rate of natural gas in Northern Ontario for residential count is set by a calculation based on an average consumption of 2,200 square metres. In the north, we surpassed this usage in less than nine months. This is unfair, and we're paying the price. In Jandam, the 86 A lady, an 86-year-old lady, used to pay, pay 160. Now she's paying more than 300 dollars. Dairy producers have been an, uh, an increase of their bills, even after investing to decrease their their costs. There's a charity that has a, a, the bill of $18,000. The government keeps saying that the carbon tax is the one increasing the, um, the bills. I would like the Premier to stop blaming the federal. I would like you to help the people in the North and offer solutions for consumers to encourage them to live in prosperity just as they deserve. Thank you. Next member's statement, the member from our communion bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Speaker, I'm pleased to share some wonderful community events at Markham Udenville recently. On Saturday, two weeks ago, I attended a charity gala hosted by the Care First Senior and Community Service Association, which has been serving seniors in the GTA for over 40 years. 
the gala has successfully raised the fund for their new long-term care campus in York Region, which will be completed next year. The same evening, I also attend the Charter and Officers Installation Ceremony of the York Region Grace Lions Club. With different chapters across the world, the Lions Club is well known for their charitable activities and relief work. I'm glad that the newly established York Region Grace Lions Club will continue this meaningful work and bring a positive impact to the community. The next day, I was invited to join the 100th birthday celebration of Mrs. McNeely. It was a special and joyful celebration with McNeely's loving family and friends. That evening, I also attended the Honoring Our Heroes, a COVID-19 commemoration concert and fair hosted by the Frontline Community Center. We recognize the incredible achievement made by the frontline workers during the pandemic and commemorate the third nation day of observance for COVID-19. Um, Thank you. That's time. 90 seconds, member statement. The member for Niagara Center. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to speak this morning about some important events happening in my riding of Niagara Centre. This week, Port Cares in Port Coburn is having its annual soup fest to raise funds for their food bank. The number of people who rely on this food bank has skyrocketed to almost 2,700. Port Cares reports their food bank is helping at least one out of eight local residents in Port Coburn. 34 per cent of those are children. For the week of April 17th at the Seaway Mall in Welland, the Hope Center, Open Arms Mission, Salvation Army, and Holy Trinity Church are teaming up to hold a week-long food drive. Speaker, municipalities are crying out for help. Just last week, the city of Welland passed a motion calling for the province to do more to address homelessness. They stated the homelessness crisis is taking a devastating toll on families and communities, undermining a healthy and prosperous Ontario. They go on to say that this crisis is the result of the underinvestment and poor policy choices of successive provincial governments. I join them in demanding that this government acknowledge that homelessness in, in Ontario is a social, economic and health crisis and commit to working with AMO, our municipal partners and not-for-profits like these fantastic organizations I've just mentioned who are working so hard to feed so many individuals and families in my community. The message is clear. The solutions are there at the grassroots level, but the provincial government must be willing to partner and provide the legislative and financial supports to make them work. Thank you, Speaker. Next member statement, the member for Durham. Thank you, Speaker. It is my great pleasure, and it is with pride that I rise today in this House to acknowledge the 130th anniversary of the grand opening of this building, Ontario's Legislative Assembly the Parliament of Ontario, the beacon of democracy in this province, Queen's Park, officially opened on April 4, 1893. After six years of construction, Premier Sir, El Sir Oliver Mowat was the first of 82 elected members at that time of the Legislative Assembly to walk through the main doors of the building, up the grand staircase, and into this chamber, where 82 seats and desks were placed into a horseshoe pattern for improved ability of members to hear each other during debates. Historians have noted that much of the original Richardson Romanesque style of architecture and amenities are still present in the building today, and it is located on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and a gathering place of many First Nations communities. Just about 1,969 citizens of Ontario have ever served as members of provincial parliament, and we are coming together with Bill 75 to restore Queen's Park because we remember our history and we are investing in our future as we celebrate 130 years of this building today. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. Next member statement. The member for Leeds. Uh, thank you very much, um, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, April marks Be a Donor Month here in Ontario. Now, one organ donor can save up to eight lives and enhance the lives of 75 others through tissue donations. Uh, and everyone has the potential to be an organ or a tissue donor, regardless of their age or health status. In Ottawa, Madam Speaker, a former nurse whose liver was damaged by hepatitis C 
following an accidental needle stick during her shift in 1990, was in vital need of an organ, donor, organ donation transplant. Although her husband launched a public petition last August for a liver donation, for months and months and months, she waited without any luck for an eligible donor. Thankfully, she just received a life-saving organ transplant thanks to a donor who read about the story in the local newspaper and graciously stepped up to donate. The donor says that he hopes that more people will consider organ donation and, say, and says that there's not, he's not sure that there are many actions you can take in life that are more impactful. Madam Speaker, currently there are 1,400 people in Ontario waiting for life-saving organ donation transplants. Ontarians are generous, and that's why I know that they will continue to step up. We need to continue to publicize the stories of people waiting for organ transplants. I am proud that over 4 million Ontarians have formally registered to consent to organ and tissue donations. I hope that everyone will join me in spreading the word to promote April as Be a Donor Month. Have your friends, family, and neighbours sign up for organ and tissue donation. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Mississauga Centre. Thank you very much, Speaker. Good morning. Holy Week, which began with Palm Sunday, is the most sacred week in the liturgical year in Christianity. This weekend, I will be joining the Catholic community of Mississauga Centre in celebrating the Easter three holy days of Last Supper Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. On Saturday, I will be joining the parishioners at St. Maximilian Kolbe Catholic Church for the traditional blessing of the Polish Easter basket, which is one of my fo most favorite days of the year. Easter is one of the most religious celebrations for Catholics and Christians across the world and in Ontario. It is a time of hope, renewal, and rebirth. It is a time when families can come together and recognize their faith on a set of shared values, embedded in the sacred principle of the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Kusandova Bashta household, we are fortunate because we get to celebrate both Christmas and Easter twice. In the Catholic tradition, and in the Orthodox Christian tradition. Yes, this involves a lot of delicious food and multiple church services in multiple languages, but above all, we get to celebrate the birth, life, death, and resurrection of one God, Jesus Christ, twice. So from my family to yours, I wish everyone Happy Easter, Joyeux Pak, Happy Easter, Shvion Vielkanotsnik, and Kulusana Wentu Tayebin. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. The member for Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock. Mr. Speaker, last week the city of Kawartha Lakes hosted the Spotlight on Agriculture Awards. Sharon and Bruce Vandenberg of Mariposa Dairy won the Excellence in Agriculture Award. From their humble beginnings in 2005, their dedication and talent enabled them to grow from a small farm operation to something much greater. In just 18 years. They are now the second largest goat cheese manufacturer in North America, employing upwards of 200 people at a plant in Lindsay, producing 100,000 pieces a day. They receive half of Ontario's goat milk produced on 140 farms, and 80 per cent of their income stays right here in Ontario and most within only 100 miles of their plant in Lindsay. It is their sense of responsibility to give back to their staff and community that has propelled them to such success. The Thurston family, Keith, Sandra, Jeff and Nicole, won the Agriculture Farm Family Award for Outstanding Contribution to Agriculture. This award recognizes the legacy contributions of farms that are economically viable, environmentally sustainable and socially responsible. The Thurston family have been a farming family in the county of Victoria for over 175 years. They are leaders in their industry through their steadfast values and extensive community engagement from 4-H leadership of agriculture and homemaking to mentoring international students, coaching sports teams and many local and provincial agriculture committees. Both awards recipients earned their prestigious award and embody the value of community, partnership, capabilities, commitment and the vision for the future. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Member statements. The member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. One of the most important investments in our communities is our hospitals. 
Thanks to the dedication of the Hospital Foundation, the unwavering support of the local community, the Premier and Health Minister Sylvia Jones, construction is underway on the new MRI site at the Smith Falls campus of the Perth and Smith Falls District Hospital. When a hospital receives state-of-the-art equipment, people take notice. They move to these communities knowing that their health care needs are being looked after. Doctors, nurses, and specialists take notice when given the opportunity to access the tools they need to achieve the highest standards of care. And the Ontario government takes notice by supporting these investments. In December 2022, the province announced that it is working to improve access to diagnostic imaging services and reduce wait times by investing in operating funding for 27 new MRI machines. Mr. Speaker, a groundbreaking ceremony will take place at the Smith Falls site of the hospital on Friday, June 23rd. Patients will be using the MRI by this fall. Margot Hallam, Executive Director of the Perth and Smith Falls District Hospital Foundation, says the MRI magnifies care close to home. The Foundation has committed to a three-year campaign to facilitate the MRI project. The Ontario government continues to lead the way with investments in health care and with all the rural communities in my riding. The best care close to home is what we all take notice of. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements for this morning.